everything just changed overnight. The models have done a complete 180, significantly changing the pattern from December 31st and beyond. We have switched from a slower, much wavier pattern ahead to a much quicker moving, more linear pattern. This could completely change who sees the cold air and who sees snowfall threats as we move forward into the month of January. Today, I will walk you through these very sudden and unexpected changes and how they will impact your weather moving forward. As we just dive into things, I wanna compare the model runs from two days ago to today on the ensemble models. Typically, the ensemble models are less subject to sudden changes. Not true in this instance. This is a very, very extreme change that we have seen in a very short period of time. And it's not even for the long range. It's about the days coming up. In my seven years of doing this on YouTube, doing the weather on YouTube, this is the most significant model turnaround I have seen for a complete pattern in all of those seven years. It's absolutely insane. So here is the model run from two days ago from January 5th until January 12th. A very warm pattern in Western North America with colder temperatures centered over the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic for this time period. And here is today's model run. Night and day difference. I absolutely hate this stuff, guys. This happens from time to time. Again, this is probably the most extreme example I have personally seen, but it does happen and it always sucks. I don't know how else to put it, but it always sucks when there is a really concrete idea that all the models are showing, even the ensembles, and they have a really firm grasp of it, and then they suddenly change course. Uh, when we're looking at the medium range and looking at the long range, which is what we do, that is the risk that we run. Uh, we sacrifice the chance of this happening for the opportunity to perhaps see really solid storm signals and pattern signals in the long range, which is what I've always tried to deliver for you guys. But this is the consequence that does happen occasionally, unfortunately. So I just wanted to come forward and explain the changes that have gone ahead and occurred. And we're going to do a GFS version of that. Here is the GFS ensemble model for January 6th to 13th. And then here is, this is from two days ago, by the way, a little bit of less cold in the east, but it was still a warmer west, colder east regime and then as we switch to today's model run not as huge of changes on this model but i'll draw something on screen here to make it a little easier for you guys to see we see the the warm air kind of centered like this and then we've got i'll put the x's where the cold is uh that is the today's model run and yesterday uh you could tell that the orientation of everything has changed and i will draw that in let's see let's do green that's a good color for this now i mean from today's, or better yet, two days ago, this is more of what I was seeing, larger areas of cold in the east, a more vertical ridge over the center to western areas of the nation, uh, and obviously huge changes from this to this. Not as huge as the European model, but still massive changes. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the European model run for today. Just all of the storminess, and it's not to say that there will not be opportunities. It will be up and down, it looks like, as of today. This is our current output from all the models that we're going to go over today. There will be opportunities, so a little bit more up and down as opposed to what we have been seeing and what we have been talking about, which is a full-blown, colder pattern in the east, warmer pattern in the west with numerous massive snowfall opportunities. Today, the models don't see that. Now, this is going to put us in a headspace of... A little bit taking it with a grain of salt what the models are showing today because we just had this massive switch. But this might be the end result. This could be. And as of now, it is the most up-to-date information. So this is what we have to go base off of. But I want you guys to be aware that there is still the chance that this somehow reverts back to what it was just showing and it just bounces back. But with the ensemble models showing what I just showed, I wouldn't necessarily bet on it right now. It is possible I have seen that occur, but I would not I would not rely on that to happen. As we walk through, the pattern from today obviously does not change. That would be extreme, but we do have a clipper system moving through the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and into the east. And then we have another one around New Year's where this does bring some opportunistic snowfall to Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and then the rest of the new, uh, northeast there between the 31st and then the 1st of January. This is where things start to change. 
We really don't get that deep cold moving in. We have a cooler pattern in the east and a warmer pattern in the west. It's very active along the west coast though, which is a bit of a change as well from what we've been seeing from the models. As we keep moving forward, it stays with that kind of cooler in the east, but look at what happens for the 6th, 7th, guys. 6th, 7th, 8th is the exact time frame we've been talking about. This has been within 10 days for multiple days now, and we, again, had a solid streak of probably five or six model runs in a row that looked almost identical. We knew this was an opportunistic time frame for deep cold and big time nor'easters. And if you guys watched any of our previous videos, you know this looks entirely different. So again, I just absolutely hate when this happens. Um, but really, there's nothing you can do to predict if this is gonna happen or if it's just gonna stick with it. We only can just look at the models every single day unless we have some sort of serious idea of why the models might be completely wrong with their ideology, which we had every reason to believe that they were spot on based on the global indicators. So this is absolutely insane. We do, during this time frame, still get a snow signal in the mid-Atlantic and northeast, but again, with how shaky the models have now proven themselves to be over the last couple of days, it seems like their handle of things is a little bit... I don't know what the proper wording would be here, but something that we really need to be hesitant with just because of the recent, very, very recent sudden changes. We do get some cooler air in the east, but again, it's more exclusive for the north, and then we revert to a very warm pattern for the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. We do get a mid Midwest cutter, but look, this isn't even a snowstorm, guys. This is, this is rain all over the place. I do suspect that this will not look exactly this way. I think that should be obvious by now, but we do finally get cold air for the 10th, 11th, 12th, but that is a long range threat, which I'm telling you right now, again, I do not think that they have a firm grasp at all on the long range now at this point with how volatile things have been. So seriously take that with a grain of salt and really the next threat for the Mid-Atlantic on today's model run, Mid-Atlantic Northeast Ohio Valley is happening at the very tail end of the model run, which I would never in a million years tell you guys is a likelihood to happen with specific details. If you guys know anything about me and my YouTube channel, you know that. So we're, we're really going to need to spend the next few days just kind of reestablishing some sort of trends for the pattern because everything is just flipped upside down. Uh, we need to really regroup on all of this. The GFS model has been the least favorable of the two, but I think today we're actually seeing a more favorable GFS than European. We keep some weak troughing in the east all the way until the... 5th, 6th, 7th there, and then finally it lifts off as we get a more Midwest cutter, but this one ends up being a massive snowstorm, so very different than the European model. This is the one that was a rainstorm down here for the European model. The GFS model is way to the north with it, much different, and as we move past it, we get some more kind of center of the nation activity there, a very deep trough in the center there for the 11th, 12th. This is a crazy, crazy, crazy storm, and it's the GFS model, and it's 300 hours out. That is Three very good reasons for you to be skeptical of what we're looking at on screen here. So just pointing that out, but that would be a crazy storm, but almost certainly not going to happen that way. And then we're kind of left off with what looks to me like a unfavorable PNA out west, unfavorable NAO, but a favorable AO. So this looks like a positive NAO, negative PNA negative AO pattern to me, which basically means that everybody's getting a little bit more Arctic air than they typically would because of that AO. We're not getting a, a trough centered over the east because the PNA isn't positive and the NAO isn't negative. So what we end up seeing is a cooler pattern, but it's very flat. That is the result of that. But again, this is 384 hours out. The models have been just so unreliable here over the past 24 hours. So we're going to have to just see if it looks anything similar to this tomorrow and the next day. It's going to be stuff to watch for. Total precipitation here over the west. West coast seeing a high amount. Again, with this sudden change, we're also seeing a lot more storminess all of a sudden for the west coast. That is something that I took note of. And a little bit more for the Midwest and Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. So we'll have to see if the models stick with this solution or not. 
We do see a decrease overall for the eastern seaboard and the deeper south states because we're not getting a jet stream that's rolling these storms in a more nor'easter fashion like we started to see for, for about a week there on the models. That is one of the bigger features that has completely been dissipated, um, basically eroded within a 24-hour period. Absolutely crazy. Total snowfall, as you could probably imagine, is less for the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, but honestly, looking at this, it is pretty crazy that despite these massive changes in a less favorable direction for snowfall, there hasn't been a massive drop-off on snowfall. Uh, that is like the one thing that is surprisingly similar. Uh, the West, the mountainous West does do better here, and there is a little bit less here in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, but really, this is not crazy, crazy far off from what we were seeing, and there still looks to be opportunities as of today. Don't, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, at this point with the with how things have gone, again, the last 24 hours. But Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast seem to all get their opportunities, at least, on this model run. The GFS is a little less favorable even, but still not completely free of opportunity. There is still opportunities in there. Probably the Midwest and Great Lakes is actually the biggest disappointment here on this one. We do see a lot down here, but again, that's coming from a storm that is over 300 hours out. So we're taking this with a serious grain of salt there's so many reasons for you to not think that this is going to occur <laughs> can't stress that enough uh the mountain is west also uptrended on this model run as well as like a big takeaway also so i know this video was quicker i know that it was a lot of just explaining the recent changes and much less of just a breakdown but i want to do a better job of just explaining these massive shifts when they do happen um and i wanted to spend a lot of today's video discussing that with you guys and I think over the coming days, like I said, probably what's going to happen is we're going to start to see some sort of uh, trend and pattern with what the models are showing after a few model runs. And we'll have a much clearer vision as to what to believe at this point for anything beyond three days out. But this has been a shocking, shocking turnaround uh, that I did not see coming at all. Uh, everything this year and all of last winter has had a really good track record with sticking with the temperature patterns and the jet stream patterns, uh, even into the medium and long range when it's showing cold. This feels a lot more of like what we had seen in the years previous to that, which was uh, pretty consistent cold threats beyond 10 days out that would end up dissipating as we got closer. Uh, but I thought we had kind of turned the page uh, on at least – the consistency of that type of thing happening on these models as they improve year after year after year. But I have been mistaken in, in that regard. But regardless, we will walk through all of this change together, get a clear view as to what to expect, and figure out what this January is going to look like because it is a total question, question mark at this point, and we have one more day after today of December. So wild wild times ahead guys thank you so much for watching this video be sure to subscribe we upload every single day you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video